Hello viewers, <coughs> in this video session we are going to discuss about memory interfacing. In the previous video session we had discussed about the buses that is the type of buses address bus, data bus and control bus. We have also discussed about the importance of buses for memory interfacing. Then we had also discussed about an latch IC that is IC74373 which is used to demultiplex address bus and data bus with the help of ALE pin. So this is all being required to understand the memory interfacing. So if you are a first time viewer of this video, so I request you to watch the previous videos so that you could understand all the basics related to memory interfacing and it the session now this session would be very easy for you to then understand the memory interfacing. So let us now continue to discuss about the memory interfacing. <clears throat> memory interfacing related with the 8085 processor and 8051 microcontroller. Now hopefully you may be knowing about a feature of microprocessor and microcontroller that 8085 microprocessor and 8051 microcontroller both, both can able to access 64 KB of external memory. Fine. Both can access 64 KB of external memory. Right. Now, this is the highest memory that the processor and controller can access or the processor and controller can be interfaced with. Now, why this is so? I mean, why the external memory that could be interfaced to the 8085 or 8051 microcontroller is of 64 KB? max only. So you would be aware about the address pins. You would be aware about the address pins of 8085 and 8051 microcontroller. So on 8085 and 8051 microcontroller we have 15 address pins. Fine. So 2 raised to 16 we can be able to generate 65,536 unique addresses, binary addresses of course, unique binary addresses which can be even represented in hexadecimal later but using 16 bit addressing we can generate 65,536 unique binary addresses because in the previous video I had shown you about 2 bit addressing. So with 2 bit addressing we can generate 4 addresses and they are 00, 01, 10 and 11 respectively. Similarly with the 16 bit addressing, fine, I would write the 16 bit initial address that is 16 times zeros, fine. And the final address will be 16 times ones. So this will be totally 65,536 unique combinations. I have skipped the intermediate combinations because <coughs> there would be 65,536 combinations of this. And this 65,536 binary, unique binary combinations are termed as 64 KB because what happens is we 2 raised to 10 actually is 1024. We call it as an 1 KB. Similarly, 2 raised to 11 is 2048. We term it as an 2 KB. Similarly, 2 raised to 16 is 65,536 and we just call it as an 64 KB. So, in digital electronics, 64 KB is actually 65,536 bytes. Okay. In digital electronics, 2 KB is actually 2048 bytes. 1 KB is 1024 bytes. So, as the number of addressing pins or the addressing capability of the 8085 microprocessor and 8051 microcontroller is of 16 bit addressing capability, that is A0 to A15, hence they can generate 65536 unique addresses thereby accessing 64 kilobyte of external memory. So I hope this first basic point is clear to you that is 8085 processor and 8050 microcontroller both have 16 bit address pins hence 64 KB memory can be 
accessed by the processor and controller. Now in the previous session we have also discussed about the data bus, the control bus, right? And address bus as well. And now even I have just repeated the addressing concept. Now let this be uh, 8085 processor or 8051 controller. Fine. So let's assume that this is either a processor or controller, right? Now, if we want to interface a 64 KB external memory, let us assume that we are interested to interface 64 kilobyte of memory, right? 64 kilobyte of memory. It could be ROM and again, no doubt any of the subtype of ROM, EPROM or e square VROM, right? Now imagine on one end we have a processor and on one end we have a memory. So we have microprocessor or microcontroller and a memory over here. Okay. Now to interface this, we require three buses that is address bus, data bus and control bus, right? So I just mention it over here. We require address bus, data bus and control bus, right? Fine. Now, this processor or controller has higher order address, okay? It has an higher order address separately available, that is A to A15, okay? It has multiplexed address bus and data bus that has to be separated by us with the help of ALE pin of the processor controller and with the latch IC. So now let us first do that. So what we'll do is we'll use this latch IC over here. Fine. This is a latch IC. IC 74373. We'll directly connect the ALE pin of processor or a controller to the latch IC that is to the enable pin of the latch IC so that this latch IC can be enabled or disabled based on the signal available on the ALE pin. Next we'll connect the multiplexed address and data bus to the latch IC's input. So this is how we connect. This is the symbol of bus. Okay. This is symbol of a single pin connection. Now, whenever ALE goes high, we have already discussed this in pre previous video session. So please go through it if you have not watched it yet. So whenever ALE goes high, this latch will be enabled and the information available here, which is address will be copied over here. So I'll write it over here address. So address will be copied into this latch IC, which is 8-bit address, fine. Hence, we would get address at the output of this latch IC. Now, whenever ALE goes low, that is 0, fine. Whenever ALE becomes 0, I would write it here. Whenever ALE becomes 0, the IC, latch IC would be disabled immediately and information available here will be the data. Hence, as this IC is disabled, data will not be copied into the latch IC. It would be instead bypassed. So we would have an, we would have an separate bunch of lines to bypass this data information. So this data information is bypassed as it is not being copied onto the <coughs> latch IC and latch IC therefore currently only consists of address, lower order address, right? So now, so we have lower order address at the output, lower order 8 bit address at the output of the latch. Now let us directly connect it to the memory. Let us directly connect this lower order 8-bit address. 
and this lower order 8 bit address is actually A0 to A7 so let us directly connect it to the memory next this bypassed bus is nothing but the data bus so we'll connect this data bus over here fine which is 8 bit wider so 8 bit data bus next the higher order address which is readily available on the processor or controller is we are going to connect it over here so we are going to connect the higher order address directly to the memory so this is again 8 bit higher order address okay which is A8 to A15 the next what is left is read pin now we are going to connect the read pin here now why I am going to connect only read pin fine that is RD bar of processor <coughs> or controller I will write it over here RD complement okay as it is not visible I will just color it with another pink okay now this is RD bar this is lower order address this is higher order address and this is data now why we connect only read is because this memory is a ROM read only memory as this is read only memory fine as this is read only memory hence read signal is applied no write signal is required to access or to connect to the memory and the last pin is chip selection that is active load chip select pin and we are going to connect it to ground because ground here represents active low fine so thereby continuously enabling the memory now if we try to understand this working so what happens is when we write a program so when we write a program to perform any operation fine this program would carry the address of memory the program would carry address of memory hence the address will be passed to the memory right the address will be passed to the memory wherein that particular memory location will be activated or enabled that particular memory location will be activated or enabled to be used or accessed next this program also either needs the data or sends the data onto memory so this data will be sent onto the memory once the particular memory is selected so data will be fetched read or fetched from the memory as this is ROM fine and to do that <coughs> the read signal will be provided by the microcontroller fine so with the help of program the address and data will be provided to the memory right address will be provided to the memory and data will be fetched from the memory thereby using the suitable signals available on the 8085 microprocessor or 8051 microcontroller so this is how we can interface a 64 kilobyte this is how we can interface a 64 kilobyte of memory with the processor or controller fine we cannot interface more than this okay so this was an one of the simplest example to make you understand how exactly the 64 KB memory is interfaced to the processor and controller. So I hope this interfacing of the 64 KB ROM with microprocessor and controller is clear to you. If you have any query, you can post the query into the comment section of this video. I would definitely answer it. Thank you very much.